The clip you're about to watch is from 2018. Flashback. Look at that. Yep. Dead copperhead, striped copperhead. This is extremely rare. Something that you really never see. And this is a real shame to have something like this get hit by a vehicle. End of flashback. Unknown to me, this clip would lead to years and years of searching. Today, we're back out in the hardwood bottoms of South Louisiana, and I have one snake on my mind. No, no, it's it's not that one. Okay, well, yes, it is that one, but that's not the point of this video. There we go, that one. Copperheads. These endemic viper species are one of the most variable snakes that we have, ranging from a typical brown coloration to a salmon pink, as well as having varied patterns, from the typical hourglass patterns to mostly patternless, and of course, the ever sought after striped copperhead. Now most of the area that we're in right now is hardwood bottom. There's a lot of cypress branches as well. And what I'm going to be looking for is logs or even human debris. There's actually a lot of old buildings or hurricane debris out here that will have lots of copperheads under them. This is actually one of the most common snakes in this region, even more so than cottonmouths actually, which is quite interesting. Normally cottonmouths outcompete copperheads, but in this area that's not the case. There are also lots of really cool and even rare species out here, but for today we're really just looking for copperheads. Now these wetland habitats, typically they have a lot more cotton mouths than any other viper. However, copperheads are definitely the most common viper in this area. And this is just a little guy. Now he's got all of his bands together and he has a more typical color. You can see two of his bands are like very close together there. They're very chilly this time of year. This is kind of the time of year where they're settling down and they're just kind of hanging out in one spot. And sometimes they'll come back to the same spot every year. Now this is a venomous snake. Don't go and play with these snakes. And my goal is to show you guys, these aren't really aggressive monsters. They're not species that really want to get you. They're just chilling out here in the vegetation. They're hunting for frogs and all kinds of little lizards and stuff like that. They're of no threat to people if you leave them alone. Obviously, I'm not advocating for people to leave these guys around their house, but I'm definitely advocating for them in their own habitat, specifically these vast hardwood bottom areas. This little guy, we're gonna go ahead and put him back Keep looking for more, but that is awesome. My first little southern copperhead. Great snake, and there's gonna be plenty more where that came from today. See you, bud. Get on your way. Because these snakes mostly rely on their camouflage, they're a relatively laid back species, and they'll only typically strike when stepped on or harassed. But they are still a viper, so it's important to remember never to encroach on their space. Don't mess with these snakes, because they are capable of lashing out much faster than you can move out of the way. While they are considered to be the most mild of the venomous snakes here in the States, this isn't a snake to mess with. Well, check this out, guys. That is a little king snake, a little speckle king. I actually haven't seen them from this area before. This is a young one. They definitely get much, much bigger than this. I mean, speckle kings can grow upwards of five feet when they get really massive. Now, in this area in particular, they're gonna have a lot more speckling, but when he's young, you can't really see that. You know, he's got more of that typical baby coloration and they look like this pretty much across wherever you can find them. He's gonna be a very pretty adult king snake. Now they're very strong. King snakes are a very strong bodied species. They're a constrictor and they will wrap around their prey and swallow it whole. And that includes other snakes. As many of you know, king snakes are named for their ability to eat other snakes, as well as just pretty much anything that they can overpower and an adult king snake would actually be eating copperheads and occasionally even small rattlesnakes. While this is something uncommon to see, we definitely know that they do it. Speckle kings are really cool. This isn't the only king snake species out here. Technically speaking, we do have milk snakes, but this is the more common of the two. And this would be the one that would be a threat to a copperhead as he gets older. He's balling up. They sometimes do this where they just go, ah, and they just kind of curl themselves up into a little ball like this. So he really just does not want to be messed with. We're going to go ahead and put him back, keep looking for our target snakes, but that is awesome. Little juvenile speckle king. My goal in finding the striped copperhead is purely interest and curiosity, nothing more. I believe that finding one of these animals will give me a greater understanding of how unique they can be. Well, this is a more typical colored copperhead. He does have a couple of broken bands. They're just kind of like slightly twisted, as you can see there. But this is the more typical bronzest brown coloration. He's sitting perfectly content here, so there's not really much reason to bug him. 
but you can really see the variation of this species. You can see there's really light ones, you can see there's kind of salmon pink ones. In some places there's even really dark ones. I don't typically see those around here, but it's just a really cool showcase of the variance of copperheads. But this is more what you're likely to run into. This is the most camouflage, in my opinion at least, the most camouflage coloration of the copperheads is that more typical coloration. Not a striped, but you can see those broken bands and those pretty much are the features that lead to a full stripe. It's just broken bands all perfectly in line. So really cool snake. We're gonna go ahead and leave him be. Keep looking for our target, but that is awesome. A little typical colored copperhead. The more typical colored copperheads are definitely the most camouflage. And that makes perfect sense. The ones that stand out more get eaten by birds, invasive hogs, and are even killed by people. But the ones that best match the leaf litter are the ones that survive, making it the more common to see. But this doesn't mean that the more varied ones aren't capable survivors. Oh man, that is a stunning copperhead. Nice salmon pink color. This is one of my favorite looking copperheads. Oh my goodness, hi, you're awake, you're tongue flicking. Now these guys stand out a little bit more on this leaf litter than the others, but they're still very camouflaged. Make no mistake, you can walk past these snakes all day long. That pattern outbreak and the coloration, the color just doesn't match these brown leaves as much as the more typical variants. Now these snakes, while I would consider them somewhat of a landmine, these aren't an animal that you should be genuinely terrified of in a way that keeps you from going outside, it keeps you from enjoying natural areas where you know that they are. Just keep a safe distance. Keeping a safe distance from these animals is really the best thing you can do for both you and them. Now as you can see here, this is a very light snake. And that just goes to show you some extra variants of southern copperheads. Now the striped variation is pretty much the same thing, as well as the very light variants, as well as the typical variants. There's lots of different color phases of these copperheads. And the striped is a mutation. I guess you could consider the salmon pink coloration as kind of a slight mutation, whereas the stripes is genuinely a mutation that actually seemingly causes other problems for the snake. We actually know very little about them. I got to see one other very pink looking one before, but this one, I like it a bit more. His tongue is even a bit lighter, I'm noticing, than the typical copperheads that we see. These snakes are very laid back, but make no mistake, if I were to touch his body anywhere above that front half, he would most certainly tag me. But they're not one to fear either. He can't magically jump towards me. He can't fly. He can't do all these silly things that fear makes people think that they can do. They're just a really great snake when and if you can see them because they're very hard to spot. Well, we saw a lot of copperheads today. Honestly, too many, but still no striper. But we saw a lot of variability and got you guys up close with some very awesome snakes. You can guarantee that I'm still gonna be looking for that striper and hopefully one day we'll get that rusty racing stripe coiled up in a pile of leaves somewhere. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to check out the last time we filmed these copperheads and answer the question how deadly they actually are. Really good video that one. And I will see you guys next time. All right, time to put this little copperhead back by his tree.